What's good, YouTube? You know who it is. Dreamy Tree Presents coming at you with another live concert review and a wine review as well. We're, we are doing 2008 live from Mile High Music Festival in beautiful Colorado. 2008. And also a... Painted white. So this is part of Dave's coming out of Blenheim Vineyards, the annual Painted White and Painted Red. This is the Painted White version from the year 2017. A great vintage. Let's well, get the specs on that. Well, so this was the 2017 that you could buy, but it's from the 2016 year. Obviously, you don't sell the year that you um, advertise. But, so, yeah, this is, like I said, I was talking about... Um, the labels, just in particular, if you look at this label, it's just very different than the 2016 collection. Yeah, I and mean, the, the the last year label we talked about in terms of the painted red, painted. Yeah, we did red. Painted red yeah. was very similar to the Away from the World album. However, there's a new album out this year, and they haven't released the cover yet. Will this cover? Be, will this, like, will this like label this reflect artwork. the new album? Like, I don't know. If you look at this artwork, like it's very intricate still. Like you still have like very like interesting lines. Um, but it's also just it's not as abstract. Like you can yeah. clearly yeah, yeah. see that this is an owl. Like it's not like left mm -hmm. up to your own interpretation. I mean, the the artwork is really intricate, but at the same time, I mean yeah. it's still an owl. And there's I mean I could go on and on. There's still like symbolism in here. The owl's like chained to the tree, like all this stuff. But what 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 are we gonna? I don't know. Is this telling us something? I don't know. There's a new album coming out in May. Will this relate to that? We don't know. That's yet to be determined. But we'll find out. What are the specs on it? All right. So this is 59% um, Sauvignon Blanc, 31% Viognier. How do you say that? Viognier. Viognier, and 10% Chardonnay. Nice. Um, Not a fan of Chardonnay. 10%. Good it percentage. It should just be like a little taste. Nice. Not too um, oaky. Yeah, so anyway, let's try let's hit it. this. Look at that color. I feel like right. it's got the color of it. Yeah, like a uh, slight Chardonnay. hint of amber. Yeah, kind of. Um, and we're going to use our cordsicle to keep it cool. Thanks, Chardonnay Steph. color. Nice. Slight golden hue. Yeah, it's a little darker uh, than I would have expected. Real sweet nose. Mm. Uh, some strawberries, peaches. Definitely getting the slight peach lemon. Fire. Some nice sourness from that Samuel Blanc. All right, let's dive in. Hmm. Interesting. Definitely getting that Chardonnay vibe. Yeah. Um, I feel like you're, you can really taste the residual sugars as well. It's not as um, tart as your traditional. It's not as sour as your traditional Samuel Blanc. Definitely that. And granted, this is an East Coast wine. Like we, I mean, it's hard yeah. to grow. It's hard to grow these types of grapes. You're not um, going to get your classic grassiness yeah, of your a typical, New Zealand Samuel Blanc. Yeah, or West your typical Coast East Blanc. Coast white wines are going to be on the sweeter side. It's really hard to pull off a refreshing, good, yeah. dry white in but, this environment. Yeah, I've, I haven't even had, I don't know if I've ever even had an East Coast Sauvignon Blanc though. Have yeah, you? I've gotten you a Virginia one before. And it's it's okay, and it's definitely sour, but it's not like the sourness, like the drinkability sourness, you know? Yeah. Um, but This is, yeah, this is definitely more on the sweeter side. So those of you who kind of like sweeter stuff, your, yeah. your Rieslings along that path, um, you may enjoy this. I can definitely, yeah, I feel like I can definitely get those Chardonnay notes. Pretty heavy. Yeah, definitely some some serious oakiness. Um, so Chardonnay fans out there, you're gonna like this. Um, yeah. But yeah, overall pretty good. Yeah, nice balance, nice mix of, of some different flavors. So yeah. anyway, um, let's go into it. We're gonna do live from Mile High from the summer of 2008. This was the first show without. Leroy Moore, RIP, RTV accident in 08. But first show with full Jeff Coffin stepping in for the whole show. So anyway, because of that and because of a few other reasons which we're gonna outline, this was a very significant show. One might say that this was the end of DMB 2.0 and the start of DMB 3.0, which 
we are sort of just now ending. Now we're going in 4.0. But anyway, I mean, this well, is the start of 3.0. Well, you have to see. I mean, what is yeah, we'll 2018 yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Um, so we start this show off, uh, opens with Don't Drink the Water. Great opener. Amazing Lovely opener. 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 And then as a treat, you get... We get the full This Land is Your full Land. Full band. Um, outro full band. I think this was one of the, if not the first times that they actually did the full This Land is Your Land outro. Dave did it in, in Radio City, but that was just D&T. So anyway, awesome version. Um, if I can recommend one version of Don't Drink the Water People, this will probably be it's, one of those versions. It is. It's, it's a good one. And just to throw it out there also, what makes... Um, this album really great. Um, this live album is you can almost always find it on. I mean, they've Spotify. Got, yeah, they've got yeah. a lot of. Well, they've got a lot of live albums on any sort of streaming service. But we have consistently like always found this on like at bars on their touch tunes. Oh yeah, yeah. touch if tunes. You want to play live? High Dave, energy. If you want, yeah. If you want to play live, Dave at the bar, like you're just feeling something. Like we know almost 100 percent of the time, if there's a touch tunes, we're gonna be able to get this album and get a song off of it. Um, and most of the time, our go-to yeah. on that album is Slide Home. But I'm just saying in general, as we're talking about this album, like you can get it and play it, like yeah. when yeah. you're out with your friends, and it's just that's just what also makes it one of our yeah. I think favorites, just because we we can experience it like in an environment like that and I think that's what makes yeah, it special. Yeah, ton of fun to play when you're out um, at the bar with friends. It, it is the most high energy album out there, par none. This is it, um, culminating out the music festival. So let's continue. Ihi, great version of Ihi. He does the full Botswana intro, you know, met some people down in Africa yeah. and heard about this song. So, great version of it. High energy. Yeah, I mean, this is the first time Boom. I'd heard this song. Um, it's it's a great version. I think it's better than Piedmont. Yeah, um, yeah it's, um, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like a big fan of this song. Um, I think it's highly underrated. Yeah. Um, Real quick, they do the Anyone See the Bridge uh -oh. after So Much to Say. Also, with this version of Anyone See the Bridge, they go into the full 2001 Space Odyssey version. Um, <laughs> Anyway, shout out to Stanley Kubrick. Great version of 2001. Fish also does a 2001. Moving on, Sledgehammer. Boom. Such a solid cover. So 2008 was all about the Sledgehammer cover. This is when they um, brought it out and it was their consistent um, like new cover for the year. Played it in a lot of shows 2008. Yeah. Um, just overall, such a fun song. Like you'll yeah. hear it. You hear those opening chords, like, yeah. and you hear the beat drop, and, and it's just yeah. It's the funny a thing is too, song. Dave actually really messes up the opening line to Sledgehammer. If you listen to it too, he like doesn't even know what yeah. he's singing. He's like some um, of the lyrics. He really um, messes it up. But actually, the another band that was playing at the same festival, OAR, they actually did Sledgehammer like five years prior. Great version. Right, 2003, 2004, Nokia Theater, check it out online, archive.org. Anyway, moving on, So Damn Lucky, great version, no thank you in the outro, but anyway, it's, a, it's still a great version of So Damn Lucky. Yeah, I mean, we get the full thank you on this album. Um... So, we're moving on. So we do we do get so damn lucky, but but the full thank you is a totally separate song, which we love, that's what we love. Hopefully if they bring it back in, in the 2018 summer tour, shout out. Hopefully at Gorge 2018, but anyway, great version. You can definitely tell they're really focused on, this is one of the first year, this is like this first summer that they really played it all the way through, the full yeah. thank you. So you can really tell the, the band is really focused, it's raw, they're really trying to work out the kinks. It's not second nature at this point. Nowadays, if you hear them do thank you, it's second nature, they just do it, the crowd loves it. Anyway, this is totally different. They're really focusing, you could tell they're really thinking it through, and they're just having fun, but they're also working hard, so it's a it's great yeah. thing to see. I mean, I didn't even realize that like this tour was the first time they started doing yeah. Thank you. People, and that's I mean, there may be a misconception out there that, yeah, that people I mean, think that thank you is some like, old school thing. It's really not. It started in 08. If you think about it, 2008 was 10 years ago, which is like a crazy long time ago, but in Dave terms, like it's not. You know, like yeah. they're like, we're talking about this is Dave 3.0. This and, is the, the last album before Big Whiskey. Yeah, I mean, but it's just, to me, it's just like mind boggling. Like it's, I thought it was like a classic Dave thing that they had started doing, like way back in the 2000s, but I mean, yeah. so, but it's just, it has that, it just, I, I don't know, like, yeah, you can see that they're focusing on it, obviously, during this tour, but it also, it's just like, when you hear it, you're like, this just seems like a natural, like, Dave thing to do. Yeah, and that's why I say this is, what I like to consider this album as, is the last hurrah before Big Whiskey. This is it, this is the last kind of classic, 
DMB, final, end of 2.0, into 3.0. This is it. This is the last hurrah of old school stuff before Big Whiskey. But I mean, overall, uh, I wouldn't say... It's kind of the road say, to Big Whiskey. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say this is like an old school set list. It's definitely a good transition. It's starting yeah, it's to a good play transition. like... Yeah, it's starting to it's kind of... It definitely has that real momentum. classic electric, electric, electric yeah. sound. Oh, it's pure it's, electric. There's pure really electric. not... There's no acoustic sounds yeah. on this album. I mean, you don't have any sort... You don't have butch, you don't have belly, you don't have any... It's like pure band, pure electric, like nothing else. Yeah. Um, but, but overall, we love it, even though it's... Even though it's new school and electric and kind of, you know, got hints of metal and everything, we still love it though. Yeah, it's a, like I said, it's just such a fun yeah, album. Fun, like, high you energy. You know we're always going to be able to play yeah. it when we're out, which is like another thing. Like, yeah. like you know, like Matt will put a dollar in the touch and we're like, what are we going to get? And I know I'm going to get a song at least from Mile High. Yeah, great Grave Digger also. Um, some other good stuff, good two step. Anyway, just like a good white wine, a good white blend. It's totally high energy. Boom. If you're, if you're looking to step up your night a little bit, it's a great album to throw in the touch tunes. Anyway, check it out. Support live music. Support great wine. And Dreaming Tree, out. out.